Um, any, any questions regarding what we talked about? Um, one of the things that I alluded and didn't go into any detail, and when you go, come to your transplant post-test, um, you will see a little bit more because that is based on bone marrow transplantation. And I will give you an example, and that, that's just to really, when, let us assume that I am a leukemic patient and I need to be treated, and that treatment, one of the treatments, is bone marrow graft. Okay? Why? Because what it is is that the leukemic cells have taken over my body. Okay? They have got to be eliminated. The way to eliminate is toxic treatments like either chemotherapy or lethal irradiation. That's not going to kill just my leukemic cell. That is going to kill, kill all my cells, right? All my dividing cells. So my T cells, B cells, bone marrow cells, everything is gone. So it has got to be replaced, okay, by the bone marrow from another individual. Well, I have been made totally immuno-incompetent by the treatment, radiation, so I will, and that bone marrow is somewhat matched as well, okay? Not fully, perhaps, but it has been matched to some extent, to a large degree, and I have accepted that. Now, that bone marrow contains all the precursors of T and B cells and monocytes and macrophages. So when it comes into my body, it is going to go through negative selection, right? And the positive and negative, all the selection process, the stem cell, they're going to go to thymus, they're going to be negatively, first positively selected, and then negatively selected. And any cell that is capable of reacting against my tissues or the donor tissues, because they are all the cells, you know, differentiating together. They've got the same antigens. Any cells that are going to be reactive to that in a harmful manner are going to be negatively selected. So I became almost like that animal chimera. Okay? Chimeric. And now I'm tolerant to the donor's tissue antigens. My cells, they are a surviving body. They are going to produce immunoglobulin of the donor type. And if there are any surviving cells from my own, they will produce my own type as well. But predominantly donor type. So I've become like that mouse, chimeric mouse. And one advantage is, of course, that I have got more than my share of MHC antigens. I'm better responsive to any pathogens. Another advantage is that if I happen to need a cardiac transplant, I can kill my <laughs> donor and take his heart <laughs> and be transplanted, okay? So, no, that, that donor of the bone marrow becomes a best source of organ donor for me, skin or any other organ, okay? So that, that I just wanted to go over that so that you realize the, mac, the mechanics that are happening in that bone marrow recipients, it is, which is similar to that experiment I should. Okay, receptor editing. Anti-idiotypic antibodies, Dr. Mayer told you that they, not only they can work, some anti-idiotypic antibody can serve to stimulate the immune response in a positive manner and are used as vaccines, and the, some, whereas there are other anti-idiotypic antibodies that can act as if they are, and they, they can suppress the immune response. Okay? So they are part of the mechanisms of tolerance. Suppressor or immunoregulatory T cells. We call them suppressor cells or immunoregulatory cells. Um, Dr. McCallop talked to you about. And not every antigen is represented in the thymus or bone marrow, obviously. There are antigens that are not in the thymic environment. So the negative selection cannot take place for every single self-antigen in the thymus. And some self-reactive cells are going to come out capable of reacting. And these mechanisms, including the receptor editing, including the down-regulatory T cells, they keep them 
from reacting to self. Okay? So there are many components of self-tolerance, including um, clonal energy, receptor editing, indeed eutypic antibody, and suppressor T-cells. Dr. Uh, McCallop already told you about. These are CD25 positive cells. They've got high concentration of IL-2 receptor. They do not respond to antigen in a positive manner, but they, and the, uh, by, uh, on the contrary, they can suppress the positive response of other cells by different mechanisms, and I'm not going to go into those mechanisms. Okay? Uh, they are not just CD4 positive suppressor cells. They are CD8 positive suppressor cells as well. They can suppress the immune response of B cells as well as T cells by different mechanisms. And that those mechanisms are beyond the scope of it. You have seen this slide before. I'm not going to dwell too much on that. That's just an example of negative selection in the uh, thymic environment. As the cells enter the cortex, uh, they, are, they are differentiating into, um, initially they are CD4, CD8 negative, CD3 negative. They develop CD4 and CD8 with low, you know, certain concentrations, and then they're developing low concentration of TCR. They are positively selected first, and then as they enter the corticomedullary area and into the medulla, the corticomedullary area, they are negatively selected, and then the, one left, the ones that are left behind are going to go into circulation. And a similar process occurs in the bone marrow. Here's a cartoon that indicates that if the cells have got only IgM on their surface, they are not fully differentiated. They interact with the antigen in the bone marrow environment. This obviously represents B cells. And that kind of a stimulus, that kind of signal, gives a, is such that they are going to activate their self-programmed death mechanism, uh, referred to as apoptosis, and they're going to die off. Here is the example. If there is no co-stimulatory molecule, T cells interact with the antigen without co-stimulatory molecule, which is CD28 with the, um, the um, CD8086. Later on, when this cell will come across the antigen, proper, which is properly presented, even properly presented, it is not going to respond to that stimulus. It has become energic. That's what is the example of uh, energy. Uh, the cells, the, with the normal cells, when they come across large amounts of antigens, they can also become, they can downregulate their receptors, number of receptors, and they almost behave as if they are not fully differentiated cells, and they become energic, and these cells also upregulate their FOS ligand, I'm sorry, FOS molecule, and there are lots of cells that have got FOS ligand, and that FOS, FOS ligand interaction is going to induce apoptosis. So first energy, and then apoptosis. Okay. Um, I already explained to you, I'm not going to go over, this is just cartoon representation of uh, the, the, um, uh, the um, um, receptor editing, you can see that there are cells that have got a certain idiotype here, represented by this light and heavy chain, and they come across the antigen, RAG1 and RAG2 are activated, and then they edit their receptor, become different specificity, okay? It does not occur just in the light chain, it can occur in heavy chain or light chain, okay? So that, that's the, uh, here's a cartoon representation of anti-idiotypic antibodies, okay? Anti-idiotypic antibodies can combine with um, certain parts of the antibody molecule on the cell surface, on the surface of B cells, and make it non-reactive, okay? Um, is tolerance to be taken for granted? No. Remember, it's the antigen-competent cells, immunocompetent cells are being produced all the time. 
and they become energic or they eliminate it because of the presence of that antigen, large amount of antigen in their environment. If you somehow remove that antigen from that environment, the newly coming, arriving immunocompetent or precursors of them are going to be, become immunocompetent and they are not going to be tolerant anymore. That doesn't occur in nature because we retain all our antigens. Okay? So, uh, by immuno, certain immunosuppressive drugs, and this is in experimental animals, by eliminating the pre existing uh, tolerant cells, if we remove them and the antigen is not present there in that environment for to uh, tolerance induction, the, the tolerance will be broken. Lack of antigen uh, during differentiation, I've already told you about that. Okay, lack of antigen exposure, again the same thing. Okay, same as above. Cross-reactive antigens. I'm tolerant to most of my antigens. That's a very significant point. I'll spend some time on that. Um, I'm tolerant to my antigens. And I have eliminated, let's say that, um, that I have made my B cells tolerant to that. But there comes an antigen that my T cell can still recognized because, because it's a foreign antigen, and it happens to be very similar, somewhat similar to some similarities to my self antigens. Now, those T cells are going to react to that and help the B cells to start producing antibodies to that. Okay? So there are antigenic mimicries, antigenic similarities to pathogens self between self and pathogens and that can lead to production of an immune response initially against the pathogen but the product can react to the self antigen and that is actually postulated as one of the mechanisms of autoimmune diseases and there are many many examples of that when I talk about autoimmune diseases we'll allude to those okay so those are the tolerance I'm going to give you a second to reflect over it. If there are any questions while I'm changing the topic, I'll be happy to answer.